Relief, eh? What? She must be tougher than she looks. Must have been terrifying for her. You know, she's going to be coming back here to stay. I get the feeling from Frank we've ever stayed to work. And... No, you're imagining things. No, I'm not. It's going to be overcrowded even one other person. Besides, I'm going to have a place of our own. And I'm going to get round to looking, I've told you. Yeah, but when? We need a bit of privacy. Can't walk around and see through night with Frank and Ricky back, can I? You haven't got a see through night. Eh? Yeah, but I'd soon get one. Excuse me, I've got work to do before they get back remote. Oh, it's all right, Dot. Uh, Sam was just going, weren't you? Yeah, I better go. I also won't be able to fool the room here, let alone her flat. Bye, Dot. Bye. Yeah, mate. You look the shad and all, are you? Yes. Shouting, on a word. You better come in. He wants to see you. Oh, better sit down. Round here, Ian. So, how are you doing? Oh, I'm managing all right. Mum and Dad are around every five minutes. They seem to forget my legs better now. At least we know you can cook. Yeah, I don't get woken up at five o'clock every morning, do I? You're missing Stephen, aren't you? Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Does he have to be here? Simon, can't you find something else to do? What is this? Have you got a new number two all of a sudden? Well, perhaps you'd like to let me know when you've finished and I can get on with some work. Oh, don't you worry, Simon. I'll be the first to let you know when I'm finished. Don't make me laugh. Look, take the notice of him here. He's not worth it. Sharon, I want to ask you a favour. I wonder why you're coming at this time. Yeah, it is about Stephen. I've been to see the solicitor. He says I have every right to ask for access. Well, of course. What's the problem? I know it's a lot to ask. But do you think you could have a word with Cindy about me seeing Stephen? Ian, are you serious? Sharon, I know it's difficult for you to see. What? I've had a few weeks to get over it, so that means I'm OK now, does it? Sharon, I don't know who else to ask. I mean, you're Stephen's god. Oh, Ian, I don't believe this. Please, Sharon. At least think about it, eh? Now, before anyone asks, I'm just going to change an optic, all right? Of course. We've got to open up in a minute, in case you've forgotten. Don't worry, Simon. I ain't forgotten nothing. All right, Ian, I'll do it. There's a few things I want to say to Cindy myself. <sighs> Mum, what are you doing here? I just bought you a few things. I saw your fridge was empty. You don't look after yourself, you know, Ian. But I didn't ask you to come. I know, but when I was here yesterday, I saw you was a bit short, that's all. Look, I've got everything I need at the cafe. I'm quite capable of looking after myself, thank you. Ian, I'm on your side, remember? There's no need to take it out on me. I'm sorry, Mum. No, I'm, I'm tied up in knots at the moment. Once I've got his access thing sorted out, I'll be fine. You're not serious about having a blood test, are you? I've got to. Ian, forget him. Mum, you don't understand. I miss Stephen. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I can, I can hear him crying. I get up to go and see him, and, and he's not there. You'll get over it, love. It might hurt now, but it's better to have a clean break. Even for the baby. He's too young to know what's going on. Maybe that's the best thing. Oh, yeah, like it was for you and Donna. You gave her away, and look what happened. How could you? How could you even think it? Never mind, say it. I'll live with what happened to Donna to the day I die. Mum, I'm sorry. I, I don't care what you've been through or who you think you are. Nobody has the right to say that to me. Nobody. Mum. Mum, please. Mum, I didn't... I'm sorry. I didn't... Mum! Oh, Mum. Oh, yes. See who that is. Hold on. Hello, Sharon. Can I come in a second? Well, I'm a bit busy, This won't actually. take long. Oh, come in, then. There's a few things I want to say. All right. Pass us that. You made a total idiot of me, didn't you? You and Simon. Sharon. No, that's all right. I can live with that. Well, I've had to, haven't I? Sharon, don't But it don't stop there, does it? Every time I turn around, it's staring me in the face. You and Simon playing happy families. In the square, down the Vic. You know, I pull a pint, I can see the look in the punter's eyes. Everybody knows. Like there's a sign on my back saying Sharon the idiot. Look, I know how you, you feel. You haven't got a clue how I feel. I hate it. Look, Sharon, I understand your pride's been up, but there's nothing my I can pride, do about it. I loved him. Oh, and I don't. What would you do, Sharon, if you're the one with Stephen? 
Trapped in a marriage with someone you didn't love. Yeah, Seeing the father of your child living with your friend. Well, it's not like that anymore, is it? You've got everything nicely taken care of. Oh, what? Half of Wolfram pretending I don't exist. Then why are you staying here? If it's so terrible, why don't they just go? It's not that easy leaving everything you've ever had. At least here we've got Pat helping us out. Yeah. Sharon, the last thing me and Simon want is to cause any more pain. All I want to do is see my little boy grow up in peace. You've got a funny way of going about it. Sharon, you know, you, you'll meet somebody. You'll get over this. You, know, you might be able to forget the past few months. You never know, we might be able to come friends again. Well, I won't hold me breath. Sharon, think about it. Surely it's better for Stephen to have two parents that really love each other. You seen the way Simon is with him? What? The proud father. Oh, it's brilliant. It's bloody wonderful for me seeing that every day, I can tell you. You know, there was a time when Simon used to say, love me. Get a clue, will you, Cindy? From now on, just keep out of my way. Oh, and by the way, I nearly forgot. I got a message from Ian. Oh? He's coming round tomorrow to take Stephen out. He's what? He's got every right, apparently. Been to see a solicitor. I don't know what you're talking about, Sharon. He can't Ian touch can have as much Stephen's access mind. to that kid as he wants. Starting from tomorrow at three. So you better have Stephen ready. All right. I won't let him. Stephen's mine. I can't touch him. Early then. Well, you pull your weight and you can go half an hour early. Ah, oh, terrific. Can you get that, please? Come to see Eddie. Eddie? Yeah. For you. Ian. Oh, yeah. What can I do for you? Come to offer you my professional services. Are you ready? <clears throat> Come on, we better go. Look, I think we should tell your mum, Simon. She knows we're going out. Yeah, but about Ian coming round, I mean, she's really stood by us. I don't want to get her back up by dropping her in here. But there's been no written agreement or anything. <coughs> Ian's going to be here soon and we won't be. They'll think there's been some sort of mix-up and then they'll go away again. Yes, but even so, I think we should still tell her. <laughs> we'll make it quick. <coughs> Otherwise, we're going to bump into him on the way out. You off him, love? Yeah, look, come out. Oh, yeah? Crown's gone. Gone? Well, when I got back, she weren't there. I've looked everywhere for her. Oh, she can't have gone far. I'll come and help you, look. And, uh, Cindy, don't worry, love. You go off and enjoy yourselves, and, uh, I'll see you later, eh? Yeah, but, Pat, um... It's all right, love. Don't worry. Hello, boy. Oh, where is she? Yes, she should be here by now. I'll get changed. I want to be over there, so oh, she'll be here in a second. I just want to say I'm keeping my fingers crossed this afternoon. Remember, blood test and everything. What are you making at Eddie? Well, I don't really know. I don't think I will be. Not my Simon's working in there. No, no Eddie got shot with his caterers, so I went round to offer services. Oh, great, at last. Don't you have no pride? Dad, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's business. It's like Simon Wicks will never get together, will it? But you're working there while Simon's there. Oh, keep your rear on, will you? He turned me down flat. What? Why? Well, why'd you think? Simon, Eddie well don't want me working in that pub. I mean, you should have seen his face grinning like it split. Who, Eddie? No. Simon, how do you feel about that? B. Ian, I've just got to go and do something. Look, Mum, I'm going to be late. It'll only take two minutes, ain't oh. it? Ian, what are you doing here? Waiting. You'll have to excuse me, love. I've got to phone the police station. The back door's open. I haven't taken anything. Oh, no, love, no. Mo's gone missing. I've been all round the market and I've just met a woman who thinks she saw her get on a bus to plaster. Cindy and Stephen looking for Mum? No, no, they've gone out for the afternoon. You what? And what kind of a mug do you not take me for? Well, they didn't know you was coming, did they? Yes, they did. It was all arranged. They knew I'd be here. Uh, excuse me, uh, you lost an old lady? Yeah, Mum. Only we found her, but she's refusing to budge. Oh, thank God. Won't be a tick, Ian. Nobody here? Well, I told you. It was slang his hook ages ago. Hello, boy. How are you, then, eh? Uh, didn't they tell you your old man was coming to see you? Eh? Hey, Ian, yeah. let go of him. Hey. Son, for God's sake, don't just stand there. I'll tell you what, we'll have to change your plans a little bit, but we can go back to the flat, get us all some nice little ding dings, eh? Ian, he's already eaten. Now, come on, don't be stupid. Yeah, will you tell these nasty people I just want to spend some time with you? Mm. Ian, give him back. Please give him back. Why are you doing this? What's the matter, Cindy? You think I'd hurt him or something, do you? What do you want then, boy? I don't know. I don't know. I just wish you'd leave us alone. I'll go when you let me have access to my son. Right? How many more times, Ian? I'm his father. It's funny, Si. Your name's not on the birth certificate. 
Didn't it all bring him up for the first ten months of his life? Look, Ian, I didn't go for all this for nothing. The sooner you accept that Simon is Stephen's father, the, the better for all of us. It doesn't matter what you two say or think. You think you're so clever, didn't you? Keep me waiting here for five hours like I was nobody important. You think I'd just go away and forget about Stephen? Like it doesn't matter at all. Well, I swear you're wrong. So just get this fruit your fixed goals, will you? As far as I'm concerned, I am Stephen's father. And I've got all the legal rights which go with it. And you better believe me. Because come what may, I'm gonna get him. Appreciate it. Well, that's all right. I like to help. That was a nice card your mum sent. Oh, nice message. Yeah, she's good at messages. She's a Catholic. You mean she believes in marriages made in heaven and all that? Something like that. Don't you think it's time you put her straight about you and Simon? It won't go away because you ignore it, you know? She'd be too upset. She's going to find out sooner or later. Better from you than somebody else. I've been trying to tell her ever since it happened, but... The longer you leave it, the more difficult it'll be, Cindy. And the more upset she'll be. Why don't you give her a ring now, while it's quiet? Yeah, but I don't know what to say to her. I mean, what shall I say? Try telling her the truth. Happy. I love him. Well, there should never have been any wedding. What? The gun... The gun's gone missing. Well, well are you sure? Yeah, but, well, it was there the night Ian came to... Yeah, but, Mum, you know what Dad's like? He's always putting things away and forgetting where he's put them. I mean, he, he could have... Oh. The police. Simon, can I have a quick word? Well, I'd better be off. Won't be too long, Simon. Bye. I just spoke to you on the phone. I told all about it. Well, about time. What did she say? Well, she wasn't too pleased, but she told me that the... Quick, see, can I use a phone? The Lord's Avernia lads just collapsed at the Adventure Playground. My grandson, what happened? Oh, no, he just collapsed. He's got some serious illness yeah, or something. Yeah, sickle cell. I better get over there. Yeah, I'll call an ambulance. Yes, please, hurry. What's going on? Some kids just collapsed in the Adventure Playground. Well, Eddie, did you uh, sort out the caterers? No. Was it something I said? Fair enough. Hiya. Hello. What are you watching? Oh, nothing special. I'm going up now anyway. We don't have to go. No, I'm tired. I need me beauty sleep, don't I? Night, Mum. Night, 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 Cindy. I've been thinking about you. Have you? I'm sorry I couldn't talk at lunchtime. That's all right. You're home now. So what do you want to tell me? Nothing. Well, it's in the pool at lunchtime. No, it's just being silly. Turning things out of my mind, getting things out of all proportion. What do you mean, telling your mum about me? Yeah, that's right. I was watching that. Yeah, well, I hate films like that, all that shooting and stuff. I just can't stand it. He wasn't even watching it. He had your eyes shut most of the time. Yes, but like I Joe, said, film. I can't stand it. Cindy. Come and sit down. You know, you really shouldn't take things so seriously. It's going to be a nervous wreck time, you're 30. Look, Simon, you know, I spoke to your mum on the phone. Well, she said the shotgun at the cottage is missing. Well, I put it back in the cupboard. You saw me. Yeah, but think about it. Are you sure it was there when we left? Yes. So someone else has got it, so what? No, I don't think so. I think someone took it while we were there. Well, I ain't got it. Have you? No, but I know who has. I've been thinking about it all evening. Who? Ian? Ah, oh, come on, what does he want with a gun? Yeah, it's frightening, isn't it? I don't want to believe it either. But Ian's got that gun. It's been weeks. If he did have it, he'd have done something by no. now. No. I know he's got it. He's just biding his time. Gun. Your parents reported it missing after you left. Oh, we don't know anything about that, do we, Simon? No. So you were staying at the cottage as well, were you, sir? That's right. Simon just drove me down there. That's a bit of a break, that's all. Anyone else down that weekend, Mrs. Beale? Only my son. But no other visitors? No, no one. So your husband didn't come down? Or uh, didn't he know you were there? No, Ian wasn't at the cottage. And me and my husband, we're, we're separated, you see. Uh, the fact is... Oh, no. 
Did you want something, Doc? Oh, no, don't mind me, no. Just got a bit of carpet freshener to dispose of. Oriental garden. You were saying about your husband? Look, you came about a shotgun and we've told you. We don't know nothing about it. I see. But no one else came to see you? But she told you. Look, if we find anything out, we'll, we'll be in touch, OK? Thank you. Well, I'll be off then. Oh, uh, don't bother. I'll see the officers out. Thanks, Doc. Now, if there's anything that you want to ask me, you know, I... And you better be going off to work, Simon. That's all right. I'm not in until lunchtime. So what are we going to do about Ian, then? Look, no one knows who's got that gun. Oh, come on, Simon. Well, why didn't you tell him about Ian going down there, then? Because I want to sort this out myself, all right? Look, I'll go and see him. Cindy, you know the state he's in. What if he has got that gun? Ian wouldn't hurt me. Oh, no? Look, let me just go and see him. Just think about it. Why would he go all that bother of taking that gun if he didn't intend to use it? Now, you stay away from him, do you hear me? If anyone's going to talk to him, I will. All right? So, well, Ian, I heard you wanted a word. Yeah, want a cup of tea? Uh, no, thanks. Ain't got time. Thanks. What's it all about, then? Business. Ian, I'm not going behind that counter. No, big business. Look, come on, sit down. Don't take me. Come on. Yeah, well, it better, Ed. So? Well, you know you're a little bit short for cash, right? What is all this? Well, you remember I did those uh, retirement dues down in the doctor and stuff, bloke named Giles? Mm. Well, he phoned up yesterday. He wants me to cover three more. But this time, they're big ones, and the money's even better. Three? Yeah, well, not all at the same time, of course. Yeah, but even so, in that's a lot of stuff to cook. Yeah, which is where you come in. My assistant. Oh, well, I don't know, mate. It'd be 30 quid in a day for it. 30? Yeah. I told you, this is big. But Ian, I've got a job. Yeah, but I only need you part-time. I can work around your shifts at the Vic. Easy. I've stalled phoning Giles back until I knew I could get you on board. I don't want to do no washing up. Oh, and it'll be cash in hand. Did I mention that? All right, Ian. You're on. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, Sharon. Uh, just one more thing. Um, there's going to be a lot of cooking to be done, and then, well, there's not enough room here. I can't do it back at the flat because of the health inspector, so... I was wondering if you... Yes. The Vic's got massive downstairs kitchens. Look, is there any charge you could have a word of Eddie, see if you can fix something up? Ian, half the square's boycotting that pub on your behalf. Yeah, well, it's about time I buried the hatchet, innit? Besides, it'd be more convenient for you, wouldn't it? <sighs> You've got a nerve. Please, Sharon, please, just for me. Forty quid a day, and I'll see what I can do. Forty quid? You're as bad as me! Mm. No, it's fine. That's no problem at all. Just tell me, uh, how many it's for, please? 250. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll catch you later then. Cheers. Bye. Right. 250 times. Very nice. All right, waitresses. So if you get the waitresses there yourself, I'll guarantee you another tenner personally. Yeah? Oh, I settled in. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, I'll catch you later. Yeah, bye. I did ring. Only you didn't. And I've still got my key. What do you want? You look busy. I am very. I don't want to fight, Ian. Who over, Stephen? Don't bother. You won't win anyway. I just wanted to have a word. You've wasted enough of my time already. Just be careful, Ian. That's all I came to say. Be careful? Careful about what? Look, you said what you wanted to say. You can go now. So go. Oh, and Cindy. What? I want to spend some time with my son next week. Stephen is not your son. There's somewhere I want to take him. I don't think you understand. Oh, I had a nasty bump on my head. Remember? Yes, but you don't remember. That's the problem. Oh, I remember. I remember everything as clear as day. No. The night of the accident, I tried to tell you something about you, me and Stephen. The trouble is, I never had the chance to finish it. It's ancient history. No, it's not. And I want to talk about it. Now! Careful, Cindy. We, we don't want anything broken, do we? Look, I don't care what you think of me or what you think I've done. But there's one thing you'd better get straight. 
There is no way Stephen is your son. No way. What's the matter, Cindy? You sound a bit frightened, like you're almost trying to convince yourself. When I was pregnant, we weren't even... It wasn't always like that, though, was it? Oh, no? No. I mean, how many times did you and Simon get it together, eh? Once. Just once. Yes, and that was when Steve... Oh, but you can't be certain, can you? Not for certain. What's the matter? Don't you like hearing the truth? You ought to be having this conversation with Simon, not with me. Whatever you think, Ian, there's no need to be so nasty. Oh, I think there's every need. That's what this is all about, isn't it? Revenge. You don't care about Stephen at all. Oh, that is where you're wrong. I love my son. I love him, and I'm going to get him off of you. Never. As I said, I want to spend some time with him next week. And as your solicitor will tell you, I'm perfectly entitled to do so. If he comes to any harm, Ian... Why would I want to harm my son, eh? When I can think of somebody I'd much rather do damage to. The police came round this morning. They was asking about a shotgun. They know me and Simon haven't got it. And they asked me if I had any idea who had. I didn't tell them anything, Ian. But I did say I'd be in touch if I remembered something. Goodbye, Cindy. Oh, one last thing. My key. Anyway, I've got one of my What am I here? Some sort of wilf? Dying? Come down! Need a hand, I'll need two pair of them. Pat's blown a fuse and gone walk about, and my own daughter won't even help me out for dining. Oh, I'll give you a hand. Will you, sweetheart? Mum, where you going, love? I want my album. Album, sweetheart? What are you talking about? Cindy, look, all I want you to do, love, is just. See, Cindy? That's rock bottom price, is that? I just want a bit of scran laid on. I don't want a second mortgage to pay for it. Ron, it's the big 5 0. Don't miss the tight. Is that the best you can do? Take it or leave it, eh? It's up to you. I want a word with you. What's all this about magistrates' courts and access to Stephen? Oh, you got it then. What are you playing at, Ian? I'm not playing. Believe me. Well, you know what you can do with that, don't you? Screw up and throw it in his face, did you? Where have you been? Sorry, Eddie. Now listen, that lot's already in. That lot's to come and make sure he signs for the empties, all right? Right. Hello, Cindy. Hello. So what did it say exactly? I just told you. It was notification of an accessory at the magistrate's court. What it means if he yeah, gets this... I know this... what it means. Yeah, what, what, what can I do? I've told him Stephen isn't his. I'm not going to no court. What do you mean you're not going to no court? I don't send them things out for a laugh, you know. It's from a court, Cindy. It's legal. Official. You mean I ain't got no choice, then? Well, I don't know. That's the trouble. But if you don't go, he'll have it all his own way, ain't he? By law, he's your husband. As far as they know, Stephen is his. I mean, they could give him custody or anything, couldn't they? Don't be silly. Well, just get some advice, you know, Cindy. They couldn't, could they? Well, let's look at the facts. You're married to Ian. You had Stephen mind you was married to Ian. That you left him to be with me. By law, you're committing adultery. Ian's entitled to be upset. By law, he's the injured party. Now he's got a home. His mum and dad live on the doorstep. He's got his own business. What have we got? 
A room in a boarding house. A stopping off place for any Tom, Dick or Harry. It's not exactly the ideal place to bring up a nipper, is it? That's why you shouldn't have thrown it in his face. Yeah, well, no one's taking my son away from me. No one. No, they're not. I'm not going to let that happen. I promise you. You want this back? Yeah. I'll see you in court then. Oh, for Ian, something else. You know what a court case means. I know you've been hurt, but what's you going to gain by embarrassing Cindy in court? Embarrassing Cindy? I mean, embarrassing her. That's right. But you want to talk about embarrassing, mate? I mean, don't look no further. I mean, here I am, the laughing stock of Wolfie. Is that what all this is about, then? Getting your own back? Yeah, but not in the way you mean. I want my own back, all right? Stephen, I want him back. It's not yours. It's all arranged. I'll take Stephen to Dr. Legs, and we have a blood test. Arranged? And paid for. You never mentioned this before. Well, why should I? I mean, you never mentioned anything about you and my wife for a whole year, did you? I mean, he's mine. I can do what I want with him. What's all this about, Ian? It's called genetic fingerprinting. I have my blood taken, Stephen his, and they'll match. And when they do, you two, you can go off, you can do whatever you want. But the boy, he comes with me. But you can forget that for no, a start, No, I think Ian. it's a good idea. Let's get this business over and done with. When? Today. Half past three, Dr. Legs. Right. We'll be there. I said I'd only be gone for five minutes. Go, then. No, Ian. If my kid's having a needle in his arm, I want to be here, all right? It's your kid, this Sorry needle. about that. My receptionist had to leave a bit early. Ian, are you sure you want to go through with this? I'm sure. Let's just get on with it, shall we, Doc? Yeah, someone's got to get back to the Vic. That's what I say, so I get your priorities Don't right. Don't get flashy, Ian, all right? Stop it, you two. Yes, I agree. Right, who's first? That's the question, isn't it, Cindy? All right, Cindy. Just bring Stephen over to the couch, would you? Sit him down and roll his sleeve right up, his left sleeve right up. We should hold his arm tight above the elbow. That's right. I'm in a bonfire as big as you can build it. You haven't got enough time to organise anything like that. I don't see why not. There's enough muck around here to build a dozen bonfires. I should be careful where you say things like that, Doc. It might be muck to you, but to some of us, it's own. Yeah, well, if it's properly organised, a big bonfire party would be a lot safer. If you ask me nicely, might give you a hand. Thanks, Doc. What do you reckon, Cindy? Hmm? November the 5th, a big bash in the square. You know, something where everyone can join in. It'd be great for the kids. Well, I don't know. Never really been that bothered about bonfire night. Well, it wouldn't do Albert Square any harm. I mean, it's hardly brimming over with communal spirit. Anyway, it'd be a laugh. Yeah, I just found bonfire. I'm a bit funny when I because I was at Catholic school. All the boys used to run after us, you know, shout, remember, remember, the 5th of November. Mind you, it wasn't very far when they threw bangers at us. Well, didn't you have bonfire and fireworks? No, not always. I always remember Father Flynn going on about fireworks like there was some sort of sin. I used to think I was really wicked even if I looked up at mm. a rocket. And there's been nothing but wickedness ever since. I'll just go and check on Stephen. Hello, Cindy. I want to talk uh, about Stephen. I don't know. Look, it won't take long. Ian! How you doing, eh? Look, I miss him. I haven't seen him before. I was standing over in the cafe thinking exactly that, so I thought the best thing to do is come over here and talk about it. I don't think it's a good idea for you to be here, Ian. Remember Axis? But I did think, take it easy. I mean, Stephen doesn't want a lot of screaming and shouting going on around him. But I haven't screamed and I haven't shouted. I just want to see my son. Mm. Look, but Frank's in the next him. room. Look, I miss him. I'm entitled to see him, you know that. I just want to see my son. Mm. Look, Ian. Look, what plans do you have for the next couple of hours? Look, I can't I just, just want to take him over to the cafe and then I'll bring him back. See, that's not a problem, is it? See? You don't think so, do you, boy? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Get my junk. Mind your leggies. That's it. You have to get inside Daddy's jacket a little bit because it's cold out, all right? There you go. Oh. I got a letter from the blood test place. And when I get the results through, you will stop all this quarrelling about access, won't you? Come on, boy. So what do you reckon, then? Well, I've been through the business plan, and at this stage, I've just sketched in a few thoughts of my own. Where we go from there depends on you. Well, do you think the catering business is viable, though? Certainly viable. But? Did I say but? Well, no, but you're close enough, aren't you? What you've got here is only half a business plan. It gets the business going, staffs it, sorts out your overheads, and projects a modest profit. Oh, come on. I mean, it's a bit better than modest, isn't it? Only in the short term. That's not going to be any good to you in five years' time. I know, but I've got to start somewhere, haven't I? And how you start determines where you go. Who's this, uh, Sharon Watts? Uh, yes, yeah, she's been helping me out. I don't really understand her input into the business. Well, I'm 
I mean, she knows what she's doing. She's done some good work for me. I think she's the ideal person to go into partnership with. Look, you need someone who can take over the day-to-day -day running of the business. Someone who can order your stock, get your menu sorted, arrange the transport, cost everything, hire in the waitresses, make sure the uniforms are cleaned, take over the cooking or bring in someone who can when necessary. Yeah, but I want to do most of the cooking myself. No, you don't. You should be too busy bringing in new business to go near a kitchen. Well, maybe in time, but... I mean, what you're talking about, I mean, somebody to run the thing, that's Sharon, that's what I say. And that's an employee, Ian. Not someone you hand over half your business to. Nah, nah, Sharon's dead right. I mean, she's lived in a pub all her life. I mean, she knows more about bookkeeping already than I'll ever learn. I I'm not <laughs> disputing her abilities. Give her twice what you're talking about here. Eh? Money well spent if she's as good Come as you on. say she is. But you don't take her on as a partner. <sighs> yeah, but I've already told her. Then you've changed your mind. You hold on to what you've got, and you never give that away. But taking on a partner in business is rather like a marriage, Mr. Beale. Mistakes can be costly and very painful. Come on, let's go see who's at the door. Stop making a mess of this table, will it? Come on, get. Yeah. Oh. Come to take him back, Ian. He'll be getting hungry. Has he been all right? No. Yeah, of course he is. Right, well, uh, I better be going then. Yeah. Bye. Right. Sharon won't be coming in as a partner. I want this to work for me, not anybody else. See you tomorrow, Ali. Where are you off to? I've got things to do. Oh, yeah? Mm. You two haven't seen any shirts lying about, have you? Shirts? Yeah. I had a pile of clean shirts and they've just disappeared. Uh, do you know anything about shirts, Sharon? Can't say I do, no. No, it's funny how things like that happen. Mm. It's the same with socks, isn't it? Where do all the old ones go? I can never find a pair that match, could I, Sharon? See you, Eddie. Yeah, I hope everything goes all right. Where's she off to? If she didn't tell you, I would imagine she didn't want you to know. You're a Burke, Simon, do you know that? Hey? A Burke. It's a polite word for something else. Oh, Mo's just been here looking for a clock. A clock? Terrific, that's all I need on it is a clock. Where is she? She's gone back to the flat. She thinks that bloke from the council's got it from. Yes, we'll have to go across the Mitchells and get it back off of Ricky, won't I? He won't have got it fixed yet. I'll fetch a clock, ready or not. I will give her back her clock, broken or not. I've had the ruddy clock up to here. Well, you better grab a paintbrush and show your face on site first, else Mo will phone up the council complaining you've been slacking. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Simon. He's suffering. I know. Well, then why not be a bit more tactful with him? Because I don't feel very tactful. He has worn me right out. Yeah, I know. I'm going to ask Eddie for a couple of hours off. Take you and Stephen to the bonfire tonight. Oh, I don't want to go. I told you. You don't want to be ignored by the bills. That's what you mean. <gasps> Meaning my son has to miss out on the fireworks. Well, I'm still going to ask Eddie for some time off. And I'm going to buy some indoor fireworks. And Stephen's going to have them. And that's that. All right? All right. Um, I better be going, I'm gonna be late. Hi. My dad's gonna be over the moon when he hears about this. What? Mr. Simpson. He's checking out. Wants his bill. Thinks we're all round the twist. Oh. Who are you? Um I'm the man from the council. He's here again, and he's got my clock again, just like that bloke said. Oh, Frank. Yeah. Um, look, uh, Mr. Simpson, uh, you booked out. Do what? Yeah, well, uh, Mo told him that you worked for the council, that you'd nicked her clock. Oh. But I tried to explain. Well, uh, you're supposed to be with us for a month. <sighs> On top of everything else, she's going to skimp me. Ah. Get back, have you? There's your clock, love. Shame, you know, Dad. No, I just took it away, be fixed. That's all, love. I told him he can't draw a week's wages and be round here drinking tea all day. It's not right. No, no. Where's my key? What key? There's a key there. There was another key. Has he nicked my other key? No, I don't think so. Well, he nicked my clock. Well, uh, let's look upstairs, eh? Perhaps you left it up there. Come. You want to keep your eye on him.
it all done in time. <laughs> oh, is he all right? Yeah. Hey, what are you doing here? What's wrong? Come on, Ian. You're in charge of where we go, Ian. Look, I don't give a monkey's where you two go. I care about where my son goes. Just leave it. He's my right? son. I don't even know if fly works with sparks and things. He's only little. What are you talking about? I'm perfectly capable of looking after him. You call this perfectly capable? Come on, Cindy. 